So as Pauline and I go through the presentation, uh, we'll ask that you hold your questions uh, until the end, as we have saved some time specifically for a question and answer period. To note, we will be covering general information regarding funding, uh, and we will not be talking about any one specific program, as program costs and individual financials vary depending on program and also vary depending on your personal situation. If you do have questions regarding specific programs, we encourage you to contact us at the Global Learning Hub and or the Financial Aid Office so that your question can be addressed based on the program and your situation. Uh, so that, let's get started. At the Global Learning Hub, our office can assist you with understanding costs for study abroad. On our website, we offer a web page dedicated to learning more about funding resources. This page includes information about funding sources such as financial aid, scholarships and awards, as well as ideas for you to think about with your personal networks and funding options. We also provide budgeting worksheets to help you line out your financial viability and commitment to a program. There are also some budgeting tips and student testimonials on the page. In a little bit, I'll show you where you can locate this page uh, and, and the different funding resources. We'll talk about um, more about each of these four areas in today's session, as well as take a look at a couple of the program cost pages to help you understand what those key components are uh, that you should look for. For this session also, we will be covering funding resources as it relates to UC Davis programming. This includes our quarter abroad, summer abroad, summer abroad internships, and virtual summer internship programming, as well as the UC system-wide uh, UC EAP programs on which students can study for the academic year, quarter, semester, and summer. UC Davis students, and if you're joining us from other UCs, um, you're all eligible to participate in both the UC Davis and UC EAP programs. Financial aid is eligible to be used toward program fees with these programs, with the exception of our virtual summer internships. For these programs, financial aid funding may not be available. In all cases though, we do recommend that students should consult with their home campus financial aid office for aid eligibility. So in understanding the cost of study abroad, we encourage you to consider what's included in the program and what's not included in the program. Looking at the bigger picture with costs helps you determine what the overall cost of the program is going to be. It's helpful to know upfront what costs are not included so that you can budget accordingly and are not left surprised with unexpected costs while you're abroad. Our UC Davis programs, as well as UC EAP programs, each have a program cost page or a cost budget that's outlined on each program's website. With costs listed for programs and the provided budget resources, our goal is to have costs be as transparent as possible. In general, the following costs are often associated with study abroad programming. As study abroad is an academic program where students are earning academic credit, obviously there's going to be academic costs. So these are costs that are associated with tuition um, and course and campus fees. Programs often have a program fee. So these are items that are included in the cost of the program. This fee is going to vary uh, by program uh, as each program will have different items that are included and different structures and things that are um, part of the whole program experience. And so the program cost page that you'll see with the program page will list what is included with the program. So for example, many of our UC Davis programs include housing, field trips and activities, and may include some or most meals. And our internship programming also includes placements and associated assistance for that placement. So again, this, this all depends on the program and you would need to explore individual programs cost page to learn more about what is included in the program fees. Next would be your out-of-pocket program expenses. These are expenses that are um, not included in the program fee, but are a necessary part of your participation in the program, such as your airfare, passport, books, visa, local transportation, as well as any meals and or housing if it's not already included in the program fee. Out-of-pocket expenses are typically paid directly by you, the student, at the time that the expense occurs. You'll cover the cost, but we provide an estimated amount of the anticipated cost on the program cost pages so that you can budget accordingly. Out-of-pocket expenses can vary depending on your personal spending habits uh, or, for example, with airfare. Um, so, for example, our UC Davis um, program budgets estimates round-trip airfare out of San Francisco, but maybe you're deciding to fly out of LAX and the cost is different from that airport. So again, the program cost page supplies an estimated cost to help you budget based on what your actual plans will end up being. Uh, and lastly, we encourage you to also consider personal expenses. These are costs that are not included in the program and would be considered for your personal benefit. 
This includes things like entertainment, souvenirs, clothing and accessories, electronics, and travel independent of what would be required as part of the program. This is an area where uh, it's good to take some time for some self-evaluation of your spending habits, um, as that can come in handy so you know what to budget for yourself personally, in addition to what's already budgeted for the program. So as you work to understand the cost of the program uh, that you're interested in doing, knowing your funding options and using the resources that are provided can help you maximize what funding is available to you. Um, and I would recommend is a, a key step in part of the process. So the most common funding source used by students to fund study abroad is financial aid. Since study abroad is an academic program and the UC Davis and UC EAP programs are an extension of academics of campus, students are eligible to seek financial aid to be used toward program fees. As I mentioned earlier, our virtual internship programs are an exception to this, and aid is likely not to be available. Students outside of UC Davis who are interested to join our UC Davis programs should check with their home campus on aid eligibility um, for whatever program that they uh, decide to enroll in. One of the key resources that our UC Davis financial aid office provides is the ability to request a financial aid estimate. A financial aid estimate evaluates the cost of the program plus your individual financial situation related to financial aid to let you know how much aid you are eligible to apply toward program and academic fees. These evaluations also take into consideration the estimated out-of-pocket expenses that are necessary part of the program. It does not, however, take into consideration those personal expenses. Uh, in a few minutes, um, Pauline, who's joined me today, will go into more details about how financial aid works and can be applied to study abroad fees. Another common funding source is scholarships and awards. So our website provides a list of scholarships that students can apply for that are eligible to be used towards study abroad programming. Additional scholarships could be out there depending on the country you study in, what you study, how long you're studying, uh, and your financial need. We have a, a scholarship um, and award funding search tool that you can use on our website to help you narrow down the variety of opportunities that are out there. Scholarships and awards range in award amounts uh, and eligibility requirements. So we recommend that you start your search for scholarships and awards as soon as you think you might want to study abroad, uh, as you'll also find that award deadlines also vary. Scholarships for study abroad can range from $500 to $5,000. Uh, while not impossible, it is rare that a scholarship or award will cover the full cost of a study abroad program. In most cases, scholarships and awards can help offset costs or help cover gaps in funding. And keep in mind, as study abroad, again, is an educational activity, Oftentimes a scholarship that may go towards study on campus may also go towards studies while you're abroad. Also always check with the financial or always check with a scholarship provider uh, if there are any exceptions to where your academics take place. Scholarships and award searches can take some time, uh, but receiving an award can sometimes make all the difference. A third funding source uh, to look uh, into is within your own personal networks and perhaps social networks that can offer funding contributions. Students in the past have said they've reached out to family members or those in their life who are particularly supportive of their academic endeavors. Other networks uh, may be local organizations that support local students through scholarships or stipend awards. Um, or some students have made use of crowdfunding websites to help fund their study or travel plans. It's recommended that if you're seeking contributions from personal or social networks, um, maybe consider is there something you can gift back in return, either in time or talent. Um, perhaps you present to the local organization that gave you money toward your plane ticket um, and share with them an overview of what you learned or gained from your program experience. Aside from funding sources, a key resource you can use um, is to put together a budget plan for your program. So when looking at programs, uh, it's ideal to research with cost in mind. So making sure that you understand the program cost webpage to know what's included and not included. Um, on our um, funding website, uh, we provide fillable budget worksheets to help you estimate your cost availability for a program. It is highly recommended to create one of these program budgets prior to enrolling in program so that you know upfront what your financial commitment to the program is going to be. Be sure to pay attention also to any non-refundable fees and cancellation deadlines so that if you're still working out the financial aspects, you know when final decisions need to be made in order to protect your financial contribution. So plan your expenses and use the program cost page and the budget worksheet to determine your total cost and funding sources. All right, so let's take a little bit here to explore the website and review some of these materials that I've talked about.
All right, so you should be viewing our um, Global Learning Hub um, home webpage. Um, and so from this webpage, this is um, under resources. This is where you can access the information for scholarships and funding. So on this website, immediately at the top, you'll see this funding search tool, uh, which you can click into. Um, but if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll get to the study abroad section here. Clicking into that, um, this is where we outline a lot of those funding sources that I have uh, just talked about. Um, so in this section, it will talk about the various resources for funding your program, in addition to those creative fundraising techniques, how to receive a financial aid estimate, those details will be here. Budgeting for your program. And this is where you can find those budget worksheets. I'll just pop one of those open so we can see what it looks like. They are a fillable PDF, so you can go ahead and type directly. You can download it, uh, type directly into this uh, and save it for future use. And it will also automatically tally um, these uh, expenses for you so you know exactly where you stand. All right, this is where you can find more information about uh, our UC Davis Study Abroad Awards. These would be for UC Davis students participating in our programs. More details about program and major specific scholarships and awards. Um, if you're looking into a UC EAP program, this is where you can go for information specific to those scholarships and awards. Um, and then for all students, this additional scholarships and financial resources will point you to even more resources um, for scholarships and awards um, that are offered through UC Davis and nationally. We also have some student testimonials down here um, that are great to see how other students um, have navigated this funding process for study abroad. And along the side here, here's another link on how you can access the funding search tool. Um, so really everything should be nice and contained within this page um, for you to be able to go through uh, and access those resources. All right, let's take a look at a couple of different cost pages. Um, so we earlier talked about understanding the cost for study abroad. So I have pulled up here a uh, example of a cost page for one of our quarter abroad programs. Uh, this is our quarter abroad language and culture in Spain. Um, and so you'll see up here at the top um, that this first section addresses the program fees. Um, so this is again, what's going to be included in the cost of the program. And these would be program fees that you're paying to UC Davis. Um, so you'll see that it includes tuition and fees, a quarter abroad fee, Accommodations and services abroad fee. Um, so if you click on this, you'll learn more about that. Um, but this accommodation services abroad fee is again that program fee that often talks about what's included uh, as part of the program. Uh, and then here is where we talk about the estimated personal expenses. So again, these are uh, expenses that are a necessary part of being a participant in the program. Um, and so we provide those uh, general estimates here. And again, these can, these can vary depending on either your personal spending habits or maybe what your actual plan might be, um, for example, with the airfare where you uh, fly out of. And so taking into account the program fee and the estimated personal expenses, we combine both of those totals to get the estimated total cost. Um, and so when you're looking at a program, um, this would be your, your kind of your bottom line that you would be thinking about. Um, and when you're then talking with financial aid about aid eligibility, you would be then looking at this total fee plus estimated expenses. Again, this doesn't take into account um, any personal uh, expenses that you would choose outside of uh, what's included as part of the program or necessary part of the program. And if you come all the way down to the bottom, um, this is where we outline what program fees are included and what expenses are not covered by program fees. Um, so it's um, very good that you pay attention to the page as a whole um, so that you're learning what's included, what's not included, and what your total uh, cost of the program would be. Now I'm gonna pop over to one of our summer abroad programs. Um, and so this is for our World Cinema and European Film Festival program. Um, right now for all our summer abroad programs, you're gonna see TBD. So unfortunately that's not really helpful in terms of the planning process, but that's because we are working to, um, to come up with the program fees for the program. So we're going through budget exercises to be able to do that. And um, our goal is to have those summer program fees posted by the end of uh, November, beginning of December. Um, and so um, we will share that information or those that information will be posted to the program pages once that is available. Um, and so you'll see it's very similar to the setup of the quarter abroad program, um, but there's just, you know, different fees that are associated um, depending on the program type. So that's good to know when you're looking at programs, 
um, you know, with our UC Davis program, there's a general structure, but then program to program, um, this accommodations and services broad fee is going to be different because it depends program by program what's included versus not included um, because every program is going to be different. Um, so again, it's the program fees, estimated personal expenses to get that estimated total cost. And then down below, again, we include the program, what program fees include and what they do not include. And so the last one I'm gonna show you is an example of a UCEAP um, program cost page. Um, and so this is a cost page example for Seoul National University. Um, their cost pages are actually kind of fun. They're a little bit interactive. Um, so just to use this as an example, let's say we're gonna plan to study abroad uh, for the fall with this university. So I'm gonna click on that. Um, or I guess it actually doesn't click, it'll highlight for us. But if you come down here, you're going to select your campus. So we'll select UC Davis. We'll say, yes, we are a California resident. Um, we're an undergraduate student. So we'll say no to the graduate student question. Um, and here's where we can select where you're gonna plan to study abroad for the fall. And so you enter that um, and it will then uh, populate um, what your tuition and fee expenses are going to be. Um, and this is how they list out then those um, other estimated out-of-pocket expenses. Um, and so this will then put together uh, the program budget for you and your total cost. Um, and it allows you to print your results. Um, and so it's really helpful to know that these um, program budgets and cost pages exist because when it comes time to talk about financial aid or, or even like looking at scholarships, oftentimes they'll need to know, well, how much does your program cost overall um, so that um, further budgeting um, can be done um, with that. All right, I'm gonna go back to our presentation here. Okay, so that's the overview of the information and the resources um, that we provide here with the Global Learning Hub for our UC Davis programs and for UCAP programs. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to Pauline Moreno, um, who's going to go into more detail uh, regarding financial aid. Thank you, Angela. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this um, afternoon. I really appreciate it. Um, like Angela said, my name is Pauline. I'm a financial aid officer at uh, at UC Davis, um, and I'm actually the managing officer for the study abroad experience. So when it comes time to reach out uh, to financial aid to learn a little bit more uh, about your eligibility specifically to your program's interest, um, more than likely you will be speaking to me or to a um, an additional financial aid officer um, whose name is Crystal Rigel, who is also uh, assisting with the study abroad experience. Um, but in the next slide, we're gonna uh, look over our agenda or my agenda for today's presentation. Um, so for today's agenda, we're going to go over some financial aid overview. Um, we are going to discuss the study abroad programs, uh, costs and funding, scholarships and other resources, and tips and takeaway. You're going to notice that uh, my presentation has a lot of overlap um, on what Angela was discussing, but one, I think it's really good and, uh, and important to continue hearing um, about the important aspects of getting prepared for the study abroad experience, as well as I'm hoping to bring um, a different element to the process as a financial aid officer. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, let's talk about financial aid overview when it comes to study abroad. The first thing or topic that I want to discuss is application and important dates. Because if you are interested in using financial aid eligibility um, to assist you with your study abroad expenses, you must be up to date on your financial aid applications. So there are two very important dates that uh, you need to be aware of. October 1st of every year is the date that the federal FAFSA application and the state California Dream Act application becomes available. Now, um, students typically are eligible for either one or the other, not both. Um, and the uh, FAFSA application is typically available to students who are either citizens of the United States or permanent residents of the United United States. Uh, students who are participating in the DACA 
uh, program are students who will complete the DREAM Act application, which is a California state application. It's very likely you already know um, which application applies to you. So you want to make sure that you keep up to date on these applications each year. If you're unsure which application applies to you, please don't hesitate to reach out to the financial aid office um, to inquire about that, which I'll be providing some contact information in some later slides. Uh, in addition to those two applications, on October 1st, the um, institutional scholarship application is also out. So these are the scholarships that UC Davis will um, award our students entering and continuing. And the application will always come out a year in advance uh, to when they're actually awarded. So for example, the application that is out now is the application for the 22-23 academic year. So the academic year that starts next fall. I know you um, all are probably just adjusting to coming back or uh, attending um, UC Davis for fall of 2021, but we are already asking you to start looking forward and preparing for your next academic year. Um, which includes the scholarship application. The scholarship application for our institutional awards are available on our financial aid website on our scholarship page. I did um, provide the link in the chat, but I'll also provide it again a little bit later in the presentation. Now, the second important date is March 2nd. March 2nd is the priority deadline for the FAFSA and or the California Dream Act application. The priority deadline is very important because uh, that would mean that a student that submits their FAFSA between October 1st or uh, through March 2nd uh, are given priority when it comes to being considered for the maximum eligibility based on your individual need. The applications are going to be out and available uh, throughout the year and past March 2nd, but if you submit the FAFSA after the priority deadline, we cannot um, guarantee that you're going to be eligible for the maximum amount of your specific eligibility. So in order to be considered for the most eligibility um, based on your need, you wanna make sure that you submit your FAFSAs um, as early um, as you can. Now let's talk about what kind of aid you are applying for when you complete that FAFSA or the DREAM Act application. The first is possible grants. Grants are gift monies that you don't pay back. Grants can be awarded through the federal government like the federal Pell Grant uh, and the SCOG grant as well as a uh, state grant, which is also the Cal Grant. Um, there's also university grant eligibility for those who are qualified. And again, most of those grants that are listed there are only available to qualified students who submit their FAFSA by that March 2nd priority deadline. So it's very important, um, again, to make sure that you're up to date on your applications. Uh, in addition to grants, you are also making yourself eligible for uh, loan eligibility. Again, the, or the loans may come in a combination of federal, um, state, university, or private loans. There are potential scholarship opportunities, whether it's campus-based, uh, departmental grants, or some outside scholarships. And then also work-study. Work-study um, is not necessarily available while you're going abroad, but it is a program and opportunity that you could potentially take advantage of uh, while preparing for your abroad experience, maybe doing um, some part-time work while attending some of your terms here, preparing to go abroad and being able to save or set some additional money aside, which we'll talk about budgeting in just a bit. Um, but all those programs and others are available through the FAFSA and the DREAM Act application. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay. So next, let's talk about financial aid for study abroad, because there are uh, many types of study abroad experiences, but really for today's uh, presentation, we are focusing on the quarter abroad uh, UC faculty-led or internship program, 
uh, or the UC System-Wide Education Abroad Program, also known as UCEAP. Um, and also the summer abroad experiences, which are both faculty-led uh, and UCEAP experiences. There are some um, additional uh, abroad experiences that you may come across uh, in your travels. Um, and uh, the term independent study abroad may be provide or may be um, brought up. Independent study abroad um, at this point is, is not qualified for financial aid through our UC Davis financial aid office. So those experiences would be like taking a qualified leave from UC Davis to pursue a independent study abroad through a third party company. Um, I did wanna mention that because again, some students may be interested or pursuing independent study abroad, um, which is perfectly fine but I want to make sure that you understand that the independent study abroad programs that are not affiliated with UC Davis or with the UC system-wide programs uh, will not qualify for financial aid and will not apply to a lot of the examples that I'm sharing today. Something else I want uh, to make sure that you are aware of is that there is so much variety and differences in funding and, uh, and, and budgeting when it comes to each individual study abroad program. So a study, uh, there is um, your financial aid will differ between which programs you choose. There is a difference between quarter abroad versus UCAP. There, uh, there's different funding for, um, for choices within the same program. For example, if you're interested in a UCEAP Spain experience versus a UCEAP Thailand experience, both of those are in the UCEAP um, umbrella. However, they each hold individual budgets. So we wanna make sure that you understand that your financial aid and your uh, financial aid experience really is going to differ between which program you choose. Um, and it also differs between the season or the time that you go abroad. Uh, for example, a quarter abroad experience versus a summer abroad experience may be very different, even if it's within the same program or within the same country. So it's really important that when it comes time to uh, meet financial aid and discuss your financial aid uh, options and opportunities that you, um, you have a really good idea of which program or programs you are most interested in um, so that we can share the most, uh, the most appropriate estimates for that experience um, instead of discussing general information because that could uh, get very confusing at times when it comes to comparing. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay. So some things that I do want to point out that are very important when it comes to planning financially for your study abroad experience. The first thing is giving yourself time, ideally one year, but we know that that's not always um, an option. But timing is very, very important because it'll allow you first to uh, understand and know the cost of your program, uh, and that would mean understanding the program tuition and fees and the personal expenses, just like Angela uh, went over in her slides uh, prior to this, there is a overall total estimated budget and they are off or not often, but they are split between direct costs and indirect costs. So it's really important that you give yourself enough time to understand the difference and those expenses that you will um, need to prepare for for your abroad experience. Also, we want you to give yourself time to understand your financial aid and financial aid options. So understanding the expenses, what kind of financial aid are available, and uh, where that possible gap may be and what options are available to cover that gap, which we're going to go over a, an example in just a bit. Applying for scholarships. So scholarships are often uh, available 
um, for study abroad experiences. And often those scholarship applications are um, available and open months prior to the study abroad uh, experience. So giving yourself time to look for scholarships, making those deadlines um, would uh, be ideal. Which brings me to dates and deadlines. Being aware of your important dates and deadlines, like that FAFSA application or the uh, DREAM Act priority deadline, um, and also scholarship deadlines. Making sure that you are first understanding what your financial aid options are and making sure you understand when you need to meet those deadlines to be considered for those uh, financial aid options. And then always checking your email and staying on top of the processes. Um, as you probably are very aware of, financial aid does like to communicate with their students uh, via email and um, uh, particularly your UC Davis email account. So making sure that you are checking your email regularly and uh, being brought to date on all information that you're uh, needing to be prepared for. Next, please. Okay, so this next slide is a screenshot of some examples between a UC Davis budget and a study abroad budget. I first want to make sure that you understand this is purely an, uh, a fictitious uh, example. And uh, we wanna, or I wanna make sure that you understand that um, your financial aid, your budgeting is a very particular to what your needs are and what your eligibility is. So we're gonna use these numbers just as a, just a rough idea of how financial aid works when it comes to your budgeting and your financial aid. But in this, uh, in the slide that we're looking at right now, to the left, we're looking at an example of a UC Davis spring quarter. So this is with the assumption that the student is here um, locally or uh, remotely at UC Davis. The overall total estimated cost is $9,729 in that gray line, but you're going to see it's a combination of the numbers above. And that slightly uh, darker blue uh, section that says tuition and fees, those would be direct fees that are charged directly to your MyBill account. The others are the indirect costs that we don't necessarily charge students directly, but we want to prepare students uh, for the need. On the right side is a example of a, a spring quarter abroad experience in Spain. Again, just like the left example, the overall cost is added up for us in that gray section, $15,308, but it's a combination of the direct fees that are in the slightly darker blue, and then the indirect uh, costs, which are in the light blue. And so when we're looking at an experience where you stay here locally versus if you go abroad uh, in spring, you're seeing that the spring abroad experience it could potentially be more costly than if you stay locally. And in this example, it's about $5,579. So with that in mind, the next slide is going to give us an example of how we can start thinking about our abroad experience. So up on the top left corner is just another quick summary of the uh, abroad uh, in Spain. Total fees, $11,661. The personal expenses, $3,647. So just below that, to the left, you're going to see current uh, quarterly financial aid package for our example student. So for our example student, we're showing that this student is receiving the California uh, grant, the a uh, federal Pell Grant, a campus fee grant, and also a subsidized loan for the amounts to the right. And then the total aid that the student is being awarded that spring is roughly $8,203. So what that means is what typically a student is eligible for here locally, um, abroad, or I'm sorry, locally at UC Davis, they're able to take that eligibility with them um, for their abroad experience. But knowing that, and knowing now what, um, what a abroad experience would cost in that same term, uh, here are some questions that we want students to start thinking about. Do I have enough to cover the fees? 
Well, in this example, the total aid is $8,203, and the total tuition and fees for this example is $11,661. So no, the financial aid will be very helpful and covers the majority of the fees, but doesn't cover it all. Do I have enough for my personal expenses? Well, if your financial aid is not covering all the fees um, at this point um, and with this current package, there is um, not additional aid at um, just yet to help cover that personal expense. So something to consider. How much am I short? Um, the student in this example is short uh, roughly about 3000 a little over $3,000 in tuition and fees and then all of the personal expenses. What are my other funding options, which is really the question that's <coughs> that um, I'm going to hit in the next couple of slides. Um, and what actions do I need to take to secure other funding? So let's start talking about getting some additional funding to help fill in potential gaps. So very plainly, there are roughly about three options when it comes to filling in that additional gap. First, scholarships. Um, ideally, we wanna try to use as much gift money to fill in as much of the remaining gap as possible. There are also loan options, and the loans are similar to the same type of loans that you're being offered when you're here locally, and they're also optional when you go abroad. So just because you're being offered loans for your abroad experience doesn't mean you're required to use the loans. And then other resources, which we're going to get to um, in just a bit. Next slide, please. But let's first talk about scholarships, because that ideally um, is going to be the next priority after you decide which abroad experience you are most interested in. And there are many different types of scholarship opportunities. Again, the undergrad or continuing undergraduate scholarship opportunities, which again, the application is out now and you can find more information on our financial aid website under the scholarship tab, which uh, there is a screenshot of it just to the right. There's also academic depart and departmental scholarships. Uh, many of those that are specific to the study abroad experience are listed in the resource uh, and scholarship section of the Global Learning Hub that uh, Angela was able to give us a tour of earlier, and then campus organizations, um, as well as any outside scholarships. We want you to pursue as much gift money um, as possible. So if you're part of any organizations, clubs, any affiliation um, that you think may be able to help fund your experience would be ideal. Next. Okay. Um, but let's talk about the other resources like those loans. So something to consider is possibly accepting or increasing your current accepted loans. And that might mean uh, increasing your subsidize or your university loan. Um, you may want to consider accepting or applying for additional loans that you haven't yet taken advantage of, like the unsubsidized loan for dependent students. That might also mean a parent loan. Um, and in some cases, when a student has exhausted all of their federal, state, um, and university loans, they may uh, move into an alternative loan option. Um, outside of scholarships and loans, there uh, may be other resources that you'll want to consider, like, um, like parental contribution. Uh, I'm sure for many students who are dependent students at this point, uh, going abroad is a conversation that you are having with your family and potentially family would be able to help contribute towards a portion of your abroad experience, as well as money management and budgeting. Um, a lot of those resources um, and tips, tools and tips are available not only on the Global Learning Hub's website, um, again, where Angela was able to help navigate uh, and tour us on their website, but also on the study, of, oh, I'm sorry, also on the financial aid website. We also have money management and budgeting um, tools for you to utilize in hopes that you can potentially look at your current expenses, your current budget to see if there's any room to start saving, putting any money aside, potentially earning money through work study experiences or any other work experiences so that you are able to set the money aside, create a cushion, and potentially reduce the need for any loan um, offers 
or potentially even take additional money abroad with you outside of what we're telling you to budget for, um, for those additional ex, uh, expenses and excursions like um, additional travel and souvenirs um, and things that are not included in your, in your study abroad budget. All right, next. All right, so. Um, We've given you a lot of information, uh, I know this, and I don't anticipate that uh, you'll have everything memorized, but what's really, really important is knowing uh, that financial aid is here to assist you and help guide you and help you understand your financial aid eligibility and um, options for your abroad experience. So when it comes time, you may want to consider um, pursuing or requesting a study abroad estimate uh, through the financial aid office. And there are a couple ways to do that. The first one is the online request. The online request is available on the financial aid and scholarship website. There is a screenshot of our website there to the right of the screen. And you'll see that the first red arrow is for the study abroad request. I know it's really tiny, but you'll head to our website, you'll click there, and you'll be able to complete a form request that will be emailed to the study, or I'm sorry, to the financial aid office so that we can process an estimate and have it uh, emailed directly back to you. This process, um, it typically takes about four to six business days. I know that the PowerPoint says 10 to 14 business days. That's typically um, uh, on some parts of our, our busiest times of year, but I will let you know that we're a little quicker to get it to you now. Um, you can also request a one-on-one -on -one, um, appointment or advising. And we offer that either by phone or in person. Uh, those one-on-one -on -one counseling appointments are, um, are by appointment only, and they're managed by the Global Learning Hub's website or study abroad office. So if you are interested in meeting with a financial aid officer one-on-one, -on -one, please contact the Global Learning Hub website at the phone number provided to be scheduled for um, the earliest appointment available to you. The next is requesting an estimate at the financial aid front desk at Dutton Hall. Our drop-in hours are Monday through Friday from 10 to 2 p.m. Uh, and um, it is, again, a walk-in process. There's no appointment needed there. The most important thing uh, that is needed for all of these, um, these options, but particularly for the front desk option at Dutton Hall, is making sure that you have the budget, the total estimated budget available to share with the financial aid officer at the front desk. Um, we're not able to pull up or provide the budget on your behalf only because there is uh, far too much variety and we want to make sure that we're providing you an estimate um, for the true and actual program you're interested in. So in order to help us out, please be prepared to have that, uh, that budget available um, for us to view. Um, outside of that, uh, we also provide um, a uh, contact information for the Global Learning Hub on our website as well through the advising tab to the right as well. So if you misplace or don't write down the Global Learning Hub's phone number, um, please uh, feel free to either um, go to the Global Learning Hub's uh, contact page or you can find their contact page through our website as well. All right, next. Okay. So lastly, for today, I wanna to just talk about some tips and takeaways, some hopefully main things that I want you to leave today with. First is making, uh, making uh, submitting your FAFSA and DREAM Act application each year a priority and a priority before that March 2nd deadline. So uh, we still have a few months before that's coming up. There's still plenty of time to make sure that your application is up to date for this upcoming academic year for 22-23. Uh, making sure that, you're, uh, that you are giving yourself enough time to plan sufficiently for your abroad experience. Reviewing and uh, researching scholarship opportunities, not only on the Global Learning Hub's website, but also the financial aid website. 
um, understanding that there is a wide variety of uh, budgeting and financial aid packaging, not only between student to student, but also by program and term. Um, understanding, once you've decided on which study abroad experience you're interested in, uh, understanding which portion of the budget are the direct fees and the estimated personal expenses of that budget. Understanding what your financial aid options are when it comes to any remaining gaps that your current financial aid can't cover, um, like scholarships, additional loans, or outside resources. Um, making sure that you are up to date on all of your emails and deadlines. And lastly, and most importantly, is understanding that assistance is available to you. Uh, we are only a call or click away or email away if ever you needed assistance from the financial aid office. All right, so I'm gonna hand, hand over the presentation back to Angela um, and then after her last bit of slides, we'll be here to answer any questions that you may have. Great, great. thank you so much, Pauline. So as far as some next steps that you can do uh, in exploring uh, the financial aspect of study abroad, um, again, our website is going to be your main resource for exploring your options with programs um, and getting connected um, with these financial resources. Um, one thing that you can do is create a study abroad account, uh, which is where you can indicate interest in programs. Um, we'll use um, our database then to send emails to students uh, on our lists about enrollment updates. Uh, and that would include when we finally do post those uh, costs for summer abroad programs, if that's an area of interest for you. Um, so if you do have an account created, we'll, we'll, you'll get an automatic email then letting you know when those costs are available. Um, we also send updates about program info sessions, um, announcements about our UC Davis award, and we do host some writing workshops for scholarship essays. And so we send out announcements about that to students within our database. I also encourage you to reflect on your academic and personal interests and define what goals you want out of a program. So, you know, maybe you're looking to meet major or minor requirements or GE requirements, or maybe you want to do an internship in your intended career field, or perhaps you're just seeking um, a personal and enrichment experience with study abroad. And so these are just some of the questions to consider, especially when you're considering putting uh, a lot of financials towards this experience. So we've talked at length today um, about these funding resources. And so hopefully by now you know where those funding resources are located. Um, and so make sure that you check into things like requesting the financial aid estimate, scholarships and awards, uh, and those, those budget worksheets. Um, as Polly mentioned, if you have any questions about you know, program costs, uh, please contact our office uh, with the Global Learning Hub. And then of course, for any questions that are specifically rated, related to financial aid or aid eligibility, um, the Financial Aid and Scholarships Office will be your best resource. Uh, and finally, if it's right for you, include your family and friends um, or those who are part of your decision-making circles in your conversations about your plans to study abroad. Um, you never know um, how much they may be interested to learn uh, and how they might be able to support you um, in this. All right, and before we move to questions, I just wanted to highlight some of the upcoming sessions today. Um, actually over the next couple of days um, that may be of interest to you based on this session today. Um, so I'll put the link in the chat here for our general showcase, but if you got here today, you probably have found these other sessions too. Um, and so you can refer to that website in the chat um, for those registration links, but these are all upcoming sessions that have to do with um, funding or scholarships um, or in particular programs, for example, with UCEAP um, budgets and scholarships. And so with that, um, while we uh, drop a few uh, links in the chat for you all, um, you're welcome to ask questions either via the chat or unmute yourself and we will go ahead and respond to questions. <laughs> 